We are never meant to exist in satisfaction. The normal state of being is a constant fight against something. Flexing our form to the nearest challenge that is presented to us. Losing a legitimate struggle to contend will naturally provide a newfound thing to fumble and furrow. Or decay us into a vulnerable complacency. The worst villain of humanity is complacency. A place whence we do not see the challenge to fight. The problems that pull us down are left unseen, sitting still and dreamy on the comfortable couch. Complacency. Poison and chaos. Death and the universe that surrounds the form you are consumes you slowly. Luckily we are not done completely. As our dwindling through time deteriorates the detrimental trait of inaction before it's too late. Eating away only enough to warrant a repeat of what results in a static state. Working, moving, fighting chaos and the poisonous inaction, disjointed movement, complacency. Every minute we fight to delay the natural world. Things are meant to be out of place, misshapen, unfair and uneven. The struggle to end this is a struggle against the fabric of our fair, a disturbance of dharma formed through drama. The conflicts and struggles have been gone for so long that we are falling into a well of complacency. We have kept the world going in status quo for too long, stewing in our relative peace that it has been analysed, amalgamated, annihilated slowly by the arbiters of anarchy seeking control. Delayed by labour movements that shrink to even smaller sizes, killing themselves and destroying their purpose, contending with the beast of satisfaction where before they fought through discontent. Depraved body or a depraved soul, at odds, destroying the other's role. We tell stories to stick together. We move and act in unison, together under those stories. They become bigger, better, more dire as we build on top of the crumbled ruins. They shed skin of our former shells, still, still. Convinced and convicted by the story and the potential roles I can play, I neglect to say my lines. I'm distracted. I'm distracted. Lazy. Lazy. Complacent in my self-indulgence and petty persuasions. It takes an active effort. Conscious awareness to wear down weariness. Even the most basic of things, a simple set of words, the sentence, is a searing pain to put down. So vain are we, to write words with colours in such a haphazardly way and call it a craft. Conviction is a creature of contempt, a simple saddle, the accessory of an automobile, but not the vehicle. She's alive and well, conviction. She doesn't purr or growl like policy, like placement and the poor man's play. But she crawls up so sly around your spine, so coyly coiled around your finger, through your hemoglobin highways, telling you the way while perfectly still. Conniving is conviction, so dishonourable and horny for your heart so unwilling to reciprocate reality. Action is unambiguous, it is there. Not so playful, not so fun. Its allure is not infatuating. Almost ugly and provoking is she in comparison to the hints that conviction so faintly controls. Action does not play around with fuzzy nonsense. The, the fine, fine fur, fur that conviction, conviction fancies, fancies is not found in action. It is a simple verb, a justified verb. Which do we fancy? Why do we let our action be played by such venomous conviction? Why are we so caught up in the tale and savage desires that conviction has us follow? For action we give orders. They are our loyal means. 
conviction toys of us, from above as below. They stay well away, they know not who we are, just what we want. Hiding within ourselves and cooing softly, forcing attention to our immediacy. Action demands plans, demands it be done, but does not go against what we say. So it sits and waits while we play around with a newfound toy. Nothing is built. Things are left untamed, not maintained. We wallow that a conviction is fiction, and still fumble after it as it hides so sly and conniving, so mysterious and mystical, a mirage.